Nine positive autistic traits. Nine traits of autism that you may not already know. Autistic people tend to break all the stereotypes, but there are some traits that almost all of us have in common. Some may be familiar to you, others may surprise you. Just wait till we get to numbers seven and eight. Welcome to today's Patron's Choice video from Asperger's From The Inside. You're here with Paul and I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism. So make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. So ever since discovering I was on the spectrum a couple of years ago, I've met lots and lots of other autistic people. And what I've noticed is that there are some traits that almost all of us have in common. So I really don't like to exaggerate, uh, but it's no exaggeration to say that most, if not all, autistic people I've ever met have most, if not all, of the traits we're about to talk about. So exactly how these traits are expressed are uniquely different for every person, and that's part of what makes the, the beautiful diversity of our community. But there are, there are some strengths that, that a lot of us have. So this video is based on strengths and, and positives. There are also downsides to being autistic, as you, as you may know, but this video really focuses on those positives. Okay, trait number one, attention to detail. This is probably the autistic trait that is most well known, most well understood. There are billion dollar companies around the world trying to leverage the strengths of autistic people in the workplace by looking for those unique individuals that have a, a fantastic attention to detail and can really bring a lot to, to the company and see things that other people don't see. So part of this means that we tend to have specialized skill sets. So rather than being having our attention everywhere and being able to do everything equally, we tend to focus on one or two things, sometimes they're called special interests, and our attention to detail in those areas means that we have specialized skills in those areas. This does not mean we all fall into the autistic savant category. Most of us are nowhere near that. We have every, the entire range of intelligence. Some of us are above average, some of us are below average. Some of us have incredible memory. Some of us have incredible memory for some things and incredibly poor memory for other things. So we, our special skills range across the whole spectrum of all of the traits of humanity, but we do often focus our attention on the detail, missing the rest of the picture. So this brings us to the second positive autistic trait, which is being persistent. And this relates to hyperfocus and sticking on one thing and not being very good at letting it go and moving on to the next thing. So I know for myself, it takes a lot of energy to change gears from doing one thing to doing the next thing. So that means that once I get into the groove of doing one thing, letting it go, putting it down becomes really, really difficult. So this links back into the attention to detail that if I'm focused on one thing, I might be called stubborn, I might be called rigid, people might say that my interests are very narrow and I'm not willing to look outside that. This often looks like being very passionate and having extremely high standards. So I know for myself, before I can feel confident with something, I, I need to have about a 99% confidence level before I think that I know something. And what I've noticed, uh, the, the neurotypicals around me, if they're about 60 or 70% sure, then they go with that decision. Whereas I feel like I need to keep looking, keep asking the question and be very, very, very sure before I'm happy to say, yep, that's done and actually move on to the next step. This might have something to do with having a lifetime of rejection and having the internal message that, well, maybe if I succeed, then finally people might accept me. So the next positive autistic trait is being creative, thinking outside the box, ignoring social expectations, being innovative, creating new things. And this could be in any area of life. It might be art or music or dancing or writing or philosophy. You name it, I guarantee you can find an autistic person who's creative in that area. So this is really fantastic from a work perspective. When you, when you couple this with our attention to detail, we can think outside the box from a fresh perspective and bring something to a team that would otherwise not be there. And this is one of the reasons that there are so many really big companies looking explicitly for autistic people to join their teams. 
The next trait is being honest, straightforward, direct, um, requiring and giving really, really clear communication. So some people say that the reason they do this is because it's just way too hard to lie. The kind of social skills that you need to try and figure that out is really difficult. So we don't like unspoken things. It's so much simpler if we just speak something out loud and then everyone is on the same page. So again, in a work situation, this can be really um, beneficial for the whole team because instead of making assumptions, I would much rather see those things written out and check my assumptions to make sure that everyone is on the same page and we have extremely clear communication between all of the team members. So this often takes more time because we need to go back and check our understanding, but it leads to a culture of transparency where everyone can be genuine and actually say what they mean rather than saying what they think is socially appropriate or acceptable in the situation. So that means that we'll often put our hand up and say, ah, something's not right here. Um, and this again can be a real asset to um, a, a corporation where you need people to actually say what they think. And I think one of the reasons for this that I've, I've observed is that um, autistic people tend to have this need to be really genuine and authentic to themselves which means that rather than just following along um, with other people and doing what, the so what is socially expected, we tend to be more comfortable going out on our own. And this goes back to the, to the, to the creativity point. I would much rather create something entirely new and do it by myself than just go along with what is already happening and, and say and do what everyone around me is doing. So that makes it easier for me to say what I think because I'm less concerned about saying the right thing or saying the same thing as everyone else. Um, and as you may also see, sometimes this means that I might come across as blunt or possibly socially inappropriate because I actually name the elephant in the room that everyone else knew wasn't supposed to be talked about. Trait number five is being non-judgmental. And what this looks like is just having no clue that one thing is supposed to be good or supposed to be bad. I just look at things and think that's a thing. I remember um, I was on a business trip to Canberra speaking to all of the, the ministers and senators um, about, about autism advocacy. And we were sitting in the canteen and there were a couple of women who were dressed as if they were going to the horse races. So I don't know if this is across every culture, but, but in especially Melbourne in Australia, um, people, dress, especially women, really dress up and go and watch horse racing. So this is really elaborate, colorful costumes, big hats and feathers and things. And when I saw these two, I didn't really think anything of it because it didn't mean anything to me. It wasn't even out of place. It took one of my neurotypical colleagues to say, oh, that's a bit weird. I wonder what they're doing. Whereas for me, I was so out of place, everything didn't make sense that I didn't even question what was going on. It was just fine. It was just a thing. Why would I judge it as good or bad or even notice that it was different? So how this plays out is a lot of us tend to be radically accepting of diversity, especially within the autism community. Because we're all so different from each other, the only way we can coexist is to be radically accepting of diversity, especially within our own community. The other thing this means is that I often forget to respect hierarchical power structures, which means that I will talk to a CEO the same as I might talk to the person, you know, begging for money on the street. And I forget that I'm supposed to treat these two people differently because in my mind, aren't we all just human anyway? So that it can be a real strength and it can also uh, come across as a little bit weird and sometimes socially inappropriate in some situations. The next trait is being loyal. So it's hard to make friends, it's hard to find friends, it's hard to build the kind of relationship that is actually worthwhile having. So a, a lot of autistic people prefer to spend time alone and sometimes that's because finding other people to spend time with who actually like doing the same thing or it's a, it's a genuinely positive experience can be quite difficult. So 
when you find a person or an organization or, or your employer or someone that, that treats you really well and it's a really good relationship, we can work really, really hard to keep that because it's so hard to find another solution that fits. Unfortunately, intense loyalty also means that we might not be so good at ending relationships that we probably should. So that could mean going along with a dysfunctional relationship or, or staying in a situation longer than we should because someone else would have just left because we're not being treated properly. So trait number seven is being highly empathic. Now, you might think, wait, what, aren't autistic people supposed to lack empathy? Isn't that what everyone says? Actually, we know that that's a myth. There was a, uh, an online survey run by um, Chris Bonello from Autistic Not Weird not that long ago, and he actually found that a lot of people say that they feel like they have too much empathy and that is actually a problem compared to not having enough empathy. So another way to think about this is that we can be really sensitive to some things. And this makes sense when you think about it through the frame of attention to detail. We notice small things. We can get affected by small things. Um, one of the reasons that people think we lack empathy is something called the double empathy problem, that it's hard to relate to someone who's very, very different to you. Um, but on the other hand, think about someone like Temple Grandin. So she had this amazing ability to understand and connect with cows that the neurotypicals around her just couldn't really understand. But at the same time, if you're relating to cows as much as you are relating to humans, then that probably says that you're not really as close to your fellow human beings as you could be. Uh, in fact, this was why uh, sometimes Asperger's is called wrong planet syndrome, because some people literally ask the question, Am I the same species as the people around me or was I somehow accidentally dropped here by aliens and now I have to learn how to get along with the natives? So the other interesting thing that happens when you're really empathic is that you see the real person that is talking to you. So if, if you're talking to me and you're sad but you're pretending to be happy because that's the socially appropriate thing to do, then I will respond to you as if you're sad and that makes people feel really uncomfortable sometimes. I was supposed to know that if you're pretending to be happy, I should treat you as if you're happy and pretend I can't see the sad. So it took me a long time to learn that just because someone is actually sad, if they're saying they're happy, I need to pretend they're happy. And that just blew my mind. But unfortunately, these kinds of complicated social dynamics lead a lot of autistic people to feel like we don't understand other people's emotions. Because I thought you were sad, but you're telling me that you're happy and there's, a, there's no congruence there. Actually, you're probably right. There is often um, no congruence between a person's actual state and their actual actions. But this is just a really complicated social thing that we need to learn. So number eight is that I have found that ironically, autistic people tend to be extremely flexible, which again, this goes completely against the common wisdom that we're supposed to be rigid and not liking change and all of these things. But again, if you think about it, if we think outside the box, find creative solutions, ignore the social norms around us, then anything is possible. I'm not going to do something because I'm supposed to. I can do absolutely anything. So when you, especially when you combine this with um, difficulty judging whether something is a good idea or a bad idea, it's just an idea and I'm happy to, happy to think about it. This means that we need structure and stability and routine and order and all of these things so that we can actually function in life. Otherwise, anything is possible and I have no idea where to start. So another positive that comes out of flexibility is that it means a lot of us have learned a very systematic approach to life. So that means that I will get all the information and put it through my system and come up with an answer. And this has great benefit for um, problem solving and rational thinking and structure and organizing things. And it actually comes from that need for structure because I'm so flexible that I need to make a structure for myself so that I can function. 
So number nine is having a very strong sense of justice. Now, this might come from a lifetime of being treated unfairly, who knows? But I find that a lot of us really get stuck on rules and fairness. Perhaps if you're a parent, you may have come across this phenomenon. For me personally, it's really hard to let things go when I know they could be better. So a personal value of mine is continual improvement. Um, this goes hand in hand with seeing society and seeing how people work together and thinking that is not okay in the future. We need to keep doing better. So the answer of it's just because that's how we do it, because I said so, all of those kind of answers just are not a good enough reason. I need to know that there's a process and a fairness and a justice to what we're doing and that we're getting better at doing that. So I guess the message with that is do not underestimate us. The autistic people I know are some of the most hardworking, persistent, determined people that I know, which, which means that we will keep going and keep trying until things get better. And now for the most important lesson. We've seen nine strengths, nine positive traits. It's important to realize that every strength is in itself a weakness and vice versa. So the question then becomes, which one do you see? The, do you see the strength or do you see the corresponding weakness? Let's take the positive traits we've just heard about. Attention to detail means that I missed the bigger picture. Persistence equals stubbornness. Being creative means that I don't conform. Being honest and direct means that I can be blunt and tactless. Being non-judgmental means that I can have really poor social judgment. Being loyal means that I might not be able to manage relationships properly and I'll cling to a relationship that's not working instead of figuring out how to fix it. Being empathic also means that I'm highly sensitive. Being flexible means that I need a lot of structure and stability and having a really strong sense of justice means that I often rock the boat and not everyone likes that. So as you can see, black and white both occur in the same picture and the real question is which one are you going to focus on? So we might leave it there for today. Uh, thanks to our Patreon community for voting for this topic. If you'd like to have your say in next month's Patron's Choice video, you can become a cup of coffee supporter of this channel for less than a dollar a week. So thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a comment telling us what your favorite autistic trait is, and we'll see you again next week. Bye.